snapshot of, of what we're looking at. When we graph the sine function, like y equals the sine of x, or y equals the cosine of x. Okay? This is not so true of the tangent, but for sine and cosine, it graphs like these nice little waves like that. Uh, they're what's called a periodic function. And there's two parts to this graph that we're going to look at today, and we'll look at other parts on other days. But today, we're going to look at, if we, if we cut this in half, this distance from the top to the middle we call the amplitude. So how big is that? Well, well, we'll figure that out as we graph some of these. And if you notice, if I start here, down, go back up, what happens right at that point? It goes down, it goes down again, like starts the cycle over again. So we call this periodic or cyclical function. It repeats this pattern over and over and over. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. All right. So this distance from here to here is called the period. Okay. So how, like, in, in what space does this repeat itself? Does it go through one cycle? Okay. And the cycle can start anywhere. It can start. Um, here, okay. As long as I, when I trace it out, I stop at like a corresponding point, a point that's like this far away from the top. So if I click through here, like that, right, right there. Well, from here to here horizontally is the exact same as from here to here horizontally is the exact same as from here to here. So that that width, that distance horizontally is the period. So period and amplitude, we're going to look at just your basic y equals sine of x graph, y equals cosine of x graph, look at their amplitude, their period, and then look at what would we do to the equation to change those things. Yeah. All right. And investigate all that. And how does that sound? Does that sound like it, it makes sense to some degree? So you know what it's going to look like. It's going to look like this wave. And so we're going to just use our knowledge of, of uh, graphs. Okay? We know what the, the x-axis and the y-axis when we see it. Um, and we have our unit circles. We should get out our unit circles. They're going to be very handy today. So I'm going to turn this over to you. I, 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 you may not get very far, and that's going to be just fine. Okay? But I want you to get as far as possible graphing y equals the sine of x. And remember, I said on the previous page, it may be helpful to create a table. So maybe start at 0, go to maybe go to pi over 6, and then pi over 4, then pi over 3, pi over 2. Go to all those angles that we have on the unit circle and look at their sine values and then graph those signs on the y-axis. You'll notice the horizontal axis, the x-axis, doesn't it's not one, two, three, four, five, six like a normal graph would be. It's in radians. So like this is pi. And how, how big would this be right here? What angle would this represent? Pi over two. Pi over two, half of pi. How about that one? What would that would be? That would be uh, pi over four. Pi over four, half of half. How about this one? Three pi over four, three fourths of the way to pi. That works. So start at zero. At zero radians, what's the sign? That's your x is your angle, and your sine value is your y. X, Y, X, Y. The X is the angle, the Y is the sine value. Okay? Every point down there, X, sine of X. So, start, you know, maybe fill in this table, maybe that's as far as you'll get. Maybe you'll graph the whole thing. Okay. I want your brains to be turning this information over, thinking about it. That's the most important thing. I'll we'll just talk about it together. Um, 
Let's start with zero. What is the sign of zero degree, zero radians? Zero. Zero. Sign of zero is zero. Can use another color. All right. Uh, you know, I am going to skip all of these and come to the square root, or sorry, the pi over two. What is the sign of pi over two? One. Okay, so I've got zero, zero, right? The the angle. We can even we can change this to theta if we wanted to. Sine of theta. So uh, zero, zero. And then we come to pi over two, and we have a sine of one. And how about if we come all the way over to pi? What's the sine of pi? We got uh, got unit circles over here. We grab one. Okay, so the sine of pi, yeah, if we come over to pi, sine is zero, just like Patrick said. All right, what angle is this? Three pi over two. Three pi, three pi over two, we got a half, and another half, and another half, that's three halves. Three halves of pi, three pi over two. What is the sine of three pi over two? Negative one. one. sine of two pi? Zero. zero. Sine of, what is this? What was the angle first? What angle is this? Is this pi over 2? 3 pi over 2? Not pi over 2. Let's jump all the way over here while we're at it. What, what angle is that? 7 pi over 2. 7 pi over 2. Very good. What's the uh, sine of 5 pi over 2? 1. 1. This is Uh, sine of 3 pi? 0. Sine of 7 pi over 2? Negative 1. Sine of 4 pi? Zero. Let's see how we it's starting to make that wave pattern. So now if you draw that, knowing that it should look like a wave, uh, we'll have it. You know, really, if we, if we go to pi over 4, what's the sine of pi over 4? Just to reinforce that we're right here. Square root of 2 over 2. To get an idea of how big that is, what do we do? Um, square root of 2, parenthesis, yeah. over 2. Square root of 2, make sure if you're using a calculator, close the parentheses so you don't have the square root of 1, essentially. Square root of 2, close parentheses, divide by 2. That's about 0.71 yeah, around that point. neighborhood. Right. Well, if, I, if I were to draw from here to there, it looks, that looks reasonable, but I would go through there. How about pi over 6, which is um, right there, not there, pi over six. How about the sine of pi over six? One half. One half, that's pretty convenient. Okay. That seems believable. Like if I, as I try to go up to this one point, it seems like I go through a bunch of points right there. And all the other points you go here, and all these other points. But we go this direction. What what angle is this? Here's negative pi. What's that? Negative pi over two. Negative pi over two. Here's zero. Negative means this direction. Negative pi over two has a sign of negative one. Negative pi. Zero. Sign of zero. What angle is this? Negative three pi over two. Negative three pi over two. Negative three, pi over two. Negative three halves of pi. And what's the sign of negative three pi over two? One, got zero, zero again over here, negative one in between, zero here, positive one. And you've got that same shape going this direction. If we go around the unit circle, see, I know this is kind of weird, because we've got, we've got this unit circle, which is a circle, right? And we look at the sign values, Round, round, around the circle. So, like the shape that we've been used to is a circle. And then here comes this wave. So, some, this thing that we've been used to looking at on the circle now turns into this wave. But that's because 
we now have a way to like, if, if I want to go out to a big angle, I go way out here on the x-axis. Right? And as I progress through all of the angles, I see the sign go up to one, up to one, down to zero, down to zero, the sign is zero there, down to negative one, up to zero, down to negative one, up to zero, and then we start all over again. Up to one again, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. And we see that back and forth, back and forth, cycling through between negative one and one, going up and down, up and down, up and down. Does that make sense? You think you can do the cosine, y equal to cosine of x now? That example of the sine of x? Let's give it a shot. Graph y equals the cosine of x. And we'll talk about their amplitudes and their periods and how to change those amplitudes and periods. Okay, so let's start again where we did with the sine. We'll start with zero. Go to zero. Um, pull over a unit circle. Reference. Right, zero. What's the cosine of zero? Cosine is these guys right here. Cosine. <coughs> cosine is one for an angle of zero. Alright, let's go to the next one that's pretty simple. Pi over two. What's cosine of pi over two? Zero. Zero. Let's continue on to pi. What's the cosine of pi? What's the cosine of 3 pi over 2? 2. 0. Back up here to 0. 2 pi, all the way around to 2 pi, cosine 1 again. So now we're back where we started, you know, vertically, and so we've gone through one full, what's it called? Period. Period. Full period. Uh, so I'm just going to sketch that one period, or, or maybe you could call it a cycle. That's two words that are fairly similar. The book uses them both. Uh, how big is that period? How long does it take to go through that cycle? From here to there, how big is it? Two pi. Two pi. Yeah. And that's not surprising because you go all the way around the unit circle, two pi, full rotation, and you go through all of the cosines. You go through some positive cosines, some negative ones. Have some uh, negative ones come back around, go through the positive ones again, and you're back to one again. So that full that full cycle takes two pi to go through. So the period is two pi. How about for the sine? How big is the period for the sine? Also two pi. From here, okay. it's not enough just to, to be the same vertical. It's got to come all the way through so that we, we've made a shape that will then repeat itself over and over and over. So from here to there, here it is 2 pi. Okay. Now let's talk about the amplitude. Briefly define the amplitude on the first slide. What would be the amplitude of this wave? Not quite. The, the, you're close. The amplitude would be from the middle to the top. So half of that. Three. From here to up there. All of it is one. So yes, one. Amplitude, capital A. around with the amplitude. Here's we're going to try and draw, write an equation that's going to create a graph that has a different amplitude. So it's different. We can make it bigger, we can make it smaller. I don't want somebody to say, well, I think you do this, and it'll make the amplitude that. Right? So over here, paste another graph in. So y 
equals, let's use the sine of x, okay? Let's now, now let's make the, the, uh, our wave, the sine of x. Let's change how tall it is. We can make it shorter, we can make it taller. How do you think you would do that? Times two. Time what times what by two? Would you take y equals two sine, uh, two sine x? Sounds good. You think it's gonna make it twice as tall, half as tall? I think it, it'll make it um, twice as tall. Twice as tall, okay, so now let's Sounds good. I'm, I'm convinced. Let's just make sure, okay? And then we can uh, use that pattern if we're sure that that's going to carry through. All right, so let's start at uh, zero. What's the sign of zero? Looking at our unit circles, look at zero. The sign of zero is zero. zero. Okay, so that's zero. Sign of zero is zero. Multiply that by two. Still zero. Okay, let's go to pi. What's the sign of pi? Zero. Multiply by two. Still zero, okay. Two pi? Zero again. Zero again, zero again. Any multiple of pi is going to be zero. Well, times two is going to be zero. We can go this direction, same story. This is helpful. Now let's go to pi over two, right there. Okay, so here we go. We plug in pi over two. What's the sign of pi over two? One. It's one, but we're multiplying this by two. So it's two times one? Two. Two. So instead of this, we get this way over here. So it doubles the amplitude. Doubles the amplitude. Sounds like Tyler was right. Go to three pi over two. Okay, three pi over two. Let's change this to three pi over two. What's the sign of three pi over two? Negative one. What's the two times negative one? So it's negative 2, 3 pi over 2. And uh, come over here, I think we're all pretty confident that would come out to be 2 and this negative 2. So every, every y value is multiplied by 2, making it 2 times greater. Uh, so it's going to expand it out like this. But at the zeros, that's not going to change anything. You multiply by 0, you're going to get 0. So the amplitude is what again? What is the amplitude of this one? Two. From the middle to the top is two. Okay. I'm going to go back to this wave over here because it's, it's pretty nice and good. Oh, I thought I had it. Yeah, right here. Okay. Um, let's talk about this sine wave, cosine wave. Does this sine wave, this shape, does it remind you of anything? Just that shape. Up and down, up and down. Wavelengths. 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 Waves. Like what things are like waves? Gamma ray. Gamma ray waves. Yeah. Those gamma waves. Anything else that you can think of in waves? Hospital life kind of thing. So okay, so. Synodic. Okay. Not quite that. It's kind of jagged, that one. But yeah, so it's definitely cyclical. The ocean, up and down, up and down, right? If, if you stare at one part of the ocean, uh, you're going to see it go up, and you're going to see it go down. You're going to see it go up, and you're going to see it go down. And if it were to kind of calm down, it would calm down to right here. So that's, that's kind of what we call the amplitude. Like how, how off of the, the middle is it? How, how much does this part climb? Okay. Uh, anything else? Any other things? Think of when you think of waves? Sound waves. Sound waves, okay. So let's talk about with sound waves, what's happening with sound waves? What's, what is becoming big and what is becoming small? Because sound waves don't, when I talk, I don't send things that go like this through the air, right? Or maybe you don't know that. That's okay. <laughs> now, how does sound work? They, what? Vibration. By vibration. It's what we call a compression wave, okay? So by both cords vibrate and then they're colliding with air mo molecules, pushing air molecules together, okay? And they push air molecules together in my, in my throat and then, and then those kind of move and, and push other air molecules. And there's not a whole lot of, like when I say things, one air molecule doesn't go from me all the way to Tyler's ear. Right? It, this, the air molecules in front of my face, I increase the pressure 
you're going to create a, a higher pressure here. And because everything wants to be evened out, it's going to try and balance that out. But when it does that, and tries to spread back apart. Now these guys are pushing against the air molecules in front of them. And then when they try to spread back out, they're pushing the, the air molecules in front of them. And so we get this just vibration and moving and pressing and increasing the pressure and decreasing the pressure. And so when the air molecules are pushing together, we're getting a high pressure at that point. So there's high pressures here, 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 here. So the high pressures are. And in between those high pressures are low pressures. Okay. And as you listen, you'll, the, the pressure will be greater in your eardrum and then, and then lower. And then, that, and then bigger and then lower. Lower and higher and lower and higher and lower. And there's, there's what we call a, a sinusoidal wave. Right? Sine. I don't know what the soil means, but um, it's just in the pattern of a sine wave. We could change the numbers around a little bit and tweak it, and uh, with different numbers we could uh, make it fit any repeating pattern kind of a thing, right? Like sound waves, pressure, high pressure, low pressure. We, um, no, when we uh, multiplied it down the other one by two and stuff, okay. it kind of it made it uh, even steeper and yeah. made it really steeper and longer. Uh -huh. Well, is it possible to make it to where it, you multiply it by so much that it comes to one, just one line? No. It's just that, like, if we multiply this by, instead of two, we multiply it by 800 million trillion billion. Mm -hmm. Well, the top of this is going to be 800 million trillion billion up there, right? But that's a number. It's a finite number. It's going to get up there. It's going to stop there and come back down, right? So, like, if we take our graphing calculators, we do y equals the, oh, we said, let's just multiply by like 100. We don't want to go too crazy. Right. Calculators are kind of dumb. Okay. Numbers can't get too big. Let's make sure we're in uh, radian mode, because that's what we're talking about. Okay. And we look at the graph. It almost looks like there's just a bunch of straight up and down lines, right? But when you can see how they're angled a little bit, angled a little bit. So this is going all the way up and then down, up and down. It's going up to 100 and down to negative 100, and up to positive 100 and down to negative 100. And if we increase that number, uh, well, that's not it. You know, if we, if we make it 10 times bigger, huh? I said, well, we increased it. By, yeah, by a factor of 10, yeah. they look even steeper than before, even more like they're vertical. But the reality is, this is a wave that goes up to 1,000, which is way, way up there, down to negative 1,000, up to positive 1,000, negative 1,000. But we're so like zoomed in on it that it looks vertical. But if I change my window so that my y values don't go just from negative 10 to positive 10, I go from negative 1,000, positive 1,000, then there's our wave. Just got to zoom, zoom out back up enough to see the whole wave. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, so what else comes in patterns like this? Like uh, the sound waves, that's a pretty fast pattern. Like the, the high pressure, low pressure, it's happening really quickly. But something that happens every year, like what's, what cycles through high and low every year? The temperatures, right? Like what time of year would this be? And this one? Winter. How about this one? Fall, fall. spring, spring. Fall. Which one is it? It's a middle temperature. Spring. How, why is it spring and not fall? Because spring comes after winter. Well, <laughs> could, okay. be <laughs> could be either or. Could be either or. Look at what's happening here. We're having low temperatures, high spring. temperatures. When do we have a middle temperature, but we're, we're getting warmer? Spring, 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 not fall, right? This would be fall right here. Yeah. Warmer, getting colder. Right? Or spring comes after winter. So summer, getting colder, colder. This is about fall. We're seeing about the same temperatures as in spring, but it's going to get colder, and it's going to be winter, and then it's getting warmer. We're seeing the same temperatures here as we saw back in fall, but it's getting warmer. It's only going to get warmer from there, and then summer, and then winter, and then spring, and then summer, and it goes back. So 
those are the kinds of, of things that we, we model. You know, if I take, uh, I don't have anything that, I could take this guy with and just swing it back and forth, okay? As time goes by, this thing is going to be on the left, and then on the right, and on the left, and on the right, and on the left, and on the right, or we can measure it, you know? It stops, and it's to the right of that, it's to the left of the middle, to the right of the middle, to the left of the middle, to the right of the middle. Pendulum, okay? So there's a lot of things that are periodic or cyclical that go through cycles, patterns, over a period of time. Usually time is what we use. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll mess around with that a little bit, but just for now, use what you've learned from here and graph y equals negative 1.5 sine of x. Actually, I'm going to change that to cosine of x. Negative 1.5 times the cosine of x. Let's see what you come up with. Okay, let's start as usual at 0. So if we start at 0, what's the cosine of 0? 1. 1. This is 1 now. Cosine of 0, that's 1. Multiplied by negative 1.5. What's negative 1.5 times 1? Okay, let's try pi over 2. That seems to be a nice, simple one. Zero. zero. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. We got our unit circles. 0 times negative 1.5. Still 0. Okay, and we come to pi. What's the cosine of pi? Positive 1.5. No, what's the cosine of pi? Just that oh, one. Cosine. One. 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 No, negative 1. Negative 1. Cosine of pi is negative 1. But then we multiply that negative 1 by negative 1.5. That's a positive. We get a positive 1.5. We come to 3 pi over 2. 0. 0. 2 pi was the cosine, just one more. What's the cosine of 2 pi? Just the cosine of 2 pi, what's that? 1. And 1 times negative 1.5? Negative 1.5. Surprised. So far we've gone from negative 1.5 to positive 1.5, back down through 0, down to negative 1.5 again. We've gone through one full. One full thing. pi. No. But period. One full period. That's why it's called a periodic function, because there is this, it does the same thing periodically. When we, and when you say that in, in everyday language, that's what you mean. When you say it happens periodically, that means it should happen like a set time between each occurrence. If you say it happens every now and then or frequently, if it's, so that's not as specific. Periodically means it happens like a, like a magazine comes periodically, right? Every month or every week or every quarter or however often that magazine comes. Or newspapers come periodically every day, every week if you get just the Sunday paper, right? periodically. It happens at the same time every every time. Every week, every year, every day, whatever, whenever it happens. Okay. So how, how big is the period of this function, negative 1.5 cosine x? How big is the period? Negative 1.5 It's 2 pi. No different than the other ones. Are they always going to be 2 pi and 2 pi? No, they're not. So now, next, we'll talk about how that would change. So that's the period for this one. That's the period for all the ones we've done so far. So we change the amplitude. What's the amplitude of this graph? 1.5. Good, 1.5. Not negative 1.5. Okay, amplitudes are always positive. So we've done 2 times the sine of x. We've done negative 1.5 times the cosine of x. So I think we could say, in general, for y equals a times the sine of x, or y equals a times the cosine of x. What's the amplitude? 1.5. For all graphs, they're always 1.5? No, 1. not 5? for all of them, but amplitude is always a. Always a, except for this amplitude is 1.5. If 
but a is negative 1.5. Well, we're all, and uh, n2 is always positive. It's always what? The absolute, the absolute value would make it positive, yeah? So the absolute value of a would be what the amplitude is. You just take a, put it in the absolute value, down the amplitude. <coughs> Make sense? The amplitude is pretty simple. You look at the numbers out in front, it's just multiplying that. You know, the, the biggest value that you had to start with in a normal sine graph or cosine graph is 1. So you multiply that by 2, cosine is going to be 2. You multiply by negative 1.5, cosine is going to be, or the amplitude is going to be 1.5. Alright, so let's discuss uh, Tyler's question. What do you think we would do to the equation? Let's start with the this, this sine of x. Well, I don't think we're going to multiply it by anything, right? It's not going to be like 3 times the sine of x, because that changes the amplitude. What do you think you might do to change the period? Add. Add, just like sine of x plus something? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what happens. Plus, let's just do plus 1. You know, 1's a good number to try. Okay. Let's maybe make a table, see what's happening here. And then we're going to have the sine of x, and we're going to add 1. So start with 0, and we'll go pi over 2. These are good values to use, 3 pi over 2. Let's test it out. Oh, it just okay. seems like it's still, it is still adding 1 yeah. to the and the, uh, the variable, or whatever it's called. Amplitude? Amplitude, yeah. Do you think it'll change the amplitude? I think it's, uh, it just kind of adds 1 it's, to it. It's going to move the position, but it's not going to change the period. Yeah. Is it going to move it left and right? No, it's only going to move it up and down. You move it up? This sounds like a really common thing to do, right? We add something to the function, like x squared plus 1, we the parabola out for it. Okay, let's, let's take a look real quick then. What's the sign of 0? 0. zero. It's 0, and then we add 1, that's 0 plus 1, so that's 1 instead of 0. And what's the sign of pi over 2? Sign of pi over 2? 1. 1? That's 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, sine of, uh, oh, I guess I'm a little off. Sine of pi. What's the sine of pi? Zero. Zero again. Plus one equals one. One. Uh, sine of three pi over two. We're gonna add one to that. What's the sine of three pi over two. <laughs> Negative one. Negative one. We have our unit circles too. <laughs> So that comes out to be zero. So let's see what that looks like. Zero, one, where it would normally be zero, zero, and start going like that. Okay. And then pi over two, comma two, and then pi, comma one, and then three pi over two, comma zero. What about what about for two pi? What do you think is going to happen there? Two pi one. Sine of two pi is zero plus one. So okay, we so just, we're just adding one to all of them and we get the whole thing up. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, because when you go down to negative one, you're gonna uh, it's just gonna add one yes. with the thing and back to zero. Yes. Exactly. It increases the amplitude. Just, it, say what about the amplitude? It increases the amplitude by one. Does it increase the amplitude? It's not it's not the amplitude isn't from the x axis, it's from the middle of the wave. No. So from the middle of the wave, how how far is it from the middle of the wave to the top? It's just one from one to two. It's just one. So did you change the amplitude to add one? So how do we change the amplitude again? Multiplication. Multiplication. Multiply by <laughs> negative one point five. Multiply by two. Okay. So I like to guess. Somebody venture to guess. Do we add something? Will that change? What are we trying to change right now? We're trying to change the, the uh, period. The period. Okay. So adding one outside of the of the side, taking the side and then adding one, that moved it up. And I suppose if you subtract something, it would move it down. Could you take this? Uh, I'm just thinking, like, how, uh, you would have to take the sine uh, si uh, something the sine, yep. and then uh, times the sine by two. Uh, not, uh, not when you take the sine by x and then add it to, because yep. every time you do that, you're just going to add the uh, yeah. the a. But uh, you're going to have to find a way to find uh, to make the sine before we actually do the uh, do the other one before we. Take X 
plus one instead of take the sign first and then add one? Yeah. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, I'm not, I just couldn't word it really good. <laughs> I think I was, I was following you though. Uh, okay, let's try that. So y equals the sine of x plus one plus something. Um, you know, that's going to be a little weird to graph because I know it's going to happen. Let's do sine of x plus pi. Because the things you plug in for x are these, these radians, and so we, if we're going to add something to it, it makes sense to add. So when you get like pi, uh, pi for instance, it's going to be 0. You're going you're gonna to put in a plus, plus 1, which is going to be 1. OK, so when you take the sine of x plus pi, You said we put pi in there, so we're going to take the sine of pi plus pi. That's the sine of 2 pi. What's the sine of 2 pi? 0. Sine of, so we put in pi, but we get 2 pi inside the sine, and then we take the sine of 2 pi and we get 0. Well, that's not different. Well, let's go to pi over 2. Pi over 2. So we get the sine of pi over 2 plus pi pi, but we need a common denominator, right? Plus pi, so plus 2 pi over 2. Okay, so we're going to take the sine of 3 pi over 2. What's the sine of 3 pi over 2? Negative. Negative 1. Now that is different. That's different from normal. Normally the sine goes up to 1 and then, and then to 0 and then down. Oh, yeah, wouldn't it wouldn't be in, in between uh, pi and 2 pi. 3 pi over 2. No, because we actually what we put in for x okay was pi over 2, it went up, be turned into 3 pi over 2. So you plug in pi over 2, wind up getting 3 pi over 2. What do you think is going to happen when we plug in 3 pi over 2? It's going to be 5 pi over 2, right? Put in 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. That's going to wind up being the sine of 5 pi over 2. What's the sine of 5 pi over 2? 1. And if we do zero, when we add pi, we get zero. So it goes like this. Instead so of what we're used to seeing, which would be like this. So it raised it by 0.5. Raised it by 0.5? Right up here, and I'm figuring out because it's a half. Because it looks like uh, it goes about half of one, uh -huh. and then goes to half of two. Oh, it's Does the period change? No. Nope. Still takes two pi to go through a full circle, sort of cycle. Full cycle still takes two pi. Yeah. What did it do to the graph? Did it's it kind of because it is a, a wave. It looks like it flipped it over. What it actually did was move. Yeah, moved it. Like this point got moved over there, so it moved it to the left. Uh, moved it to the left pi. What if you multiply? What, what if you multiply what? X by something you said? X by something Let's try that. I love the guesses. What if you take not two times the sine of x, but maybe the sine of two times x? So multiply it by two before you take the sine. Let's see what happens there. Alright. Make a little table. Okay, so if x is 0, then we're going to take the sine of 2 times 0, which is just 0, right? Which is sine of 0 is what? Zero. Is 0, right? So we, we put in 0, you multiply by 2, you still take the sine of 0. So we've got to go some other number to make this interesting. Um, maybe pi over 2. Okay, well. If I put pi over 2 right there, pi over 2 times 2 is going to give me what? 4 pi. 1 pi. Pi over 2 times 2, the 2's cancel, sine of pi. Okay, so I put in pi over 2, that, that's right here. Put in pi over 2. I want to take in the sine of pi. What's the sine of pi? 0. 1. 0. 0. 0. 0. Sine of pi. The sin, let's see, sine of pi, here's, 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 here's pi, the sine is the vertical, so it is zero. It is zero, okay. So zero, 
Okay, that doesn't normally happen. That's interesting. Okay, let's go to pi. Wait. Some, somebody said wait? No, I was just thinking. Ah, it's a damn lot. All right, so we take pi, we put it in there. In there. Multiply by 2. 2 pi. 0 again. So it's a plot line. No, it's not a plot line. <laughs> okay, let's, let's do this. Um, um, I'm looking for a yellow, unique color. Maybe it'll show up. Okay, let's go in between pi or zero and pi over two. Let's go to pi over four. That works. All right, so let's see what happens in here. Two times pi over four is going to be what? Half pi, pi over two. What's the sign of pi over two? One. 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 Yes. <gasps> so that did so change. Did we shorten it? It looks like it's squished. Yeah. Did you say the period is different? Yeah, we short. So let's do uh, let's do black. We'll go to three pi over four. Okay. We'll put three pi over the three pi over four in there. Multiply two times three pi over four. These cancel. You get two three pi over two. What's the side of three pi over two? Negative, Negative one. It certainly seems like a full cycle but in a different period. What's the period? Pi over two. No, no, pi. Like pi, pi, yeah. Pi. So yeah, when you multiply, it's shorter. So what happens if you divide? That's a great question. Wouldn't it get more longer? Well, hey, if you divide, because <laughs> it's less than uh, uh, I'm thinking that if you take it two and then take it something that's less than one, it's making it shorter. Less than one, you think I'll make it squish it? Yeah. Together, not spread it out. No, I, I think when you're taking it, and when you were taking it before two times something, yeah. something that was less than one, it was making it squish together more. Uh, but uh, what if it went out like above one? Would it do the same thing? Above one, like above pi? Yeah. Oh well, let's find out with this one. So if we go to um, here, this would be. Let's see, pi, so 5 pi over 4. Let's see what happens there. 5 pi over 4, that's going to be the sine of 5 pi over 2. What's the sine of 5 pi over 2? Let's see, pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. 1, sine of 1. So, the sign is back up to one, right? Just like you kind of would think, it goes up and then down. You would think it'd go back up again, it does. So it's just gonna keep going up, zero, down to negative one, zero, up to one, down to zero, down to negative one, over and over and over and over. So the period of this one was? One, no, no pi. One pi. Okay. What is the period normally? Two. Pi. Two pi, good, good. So now let's look and see, if multiplying it by 2, well, take it from 2 pi to pi, dividing by 2, what do you think? No. By lengthening it to 3 pi. 3 pi? Or 4. Wow. 3 pi, 4. Wow. I don't know. 4. Well, let's find out. 4 pi. Nothing better than to just go ahead and try. X side of 1 half times X. Okay, so it's 0. Let's try. Uh, pi and uh, let's do pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Let's do this. Okay, so we put 0 in there, that's going to be the sign of 0. What's the sign of 0? 0. 0, so that's nothing really special happening there. Put in pi over 2, what do you get when you do 1 half times pi over 2? 0. 0.5. What would be pi over 4? Pi over 4? What's the sign of pi over 4? Seven. Pi over 4, that's going to be root 2 over 2, 0.71. Okay, let's follow that whole process again. And I can try and go. What? There we go. Let's try and color code this. I want to 
Okay, so this, this purple guy here, let's follow this thing all the way through. Pi over 2. Here's pi over 2. So that's what I'm putting in for x. Pi over 2 times 1 half. Pi times 1 is pi. 2 times 2 is 4. Sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And we've done this a few times, and we know that's uh, 0 0.71. Somewhere in that neighborhood. So it just has expanded Yeah, normally the, the 0.71 that here, now it's moved over and stretched out to over there. Let's try pi. Pi over 2. So when we put pi in there, we'll get the sine of pi over 2. One. <laughs> and we're finally up to 1. Yes. This is so cool. <laughs> All right, let's jump to uh, 2 pi. 2 pi, 2 pi, we put 2 pi in here, what happens when we take 2 pi times 1 half? You get pi, the sine of pi, what's the sine of pi? Zero. Pi pi. Zero. 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 See what we have so far? Up to 1, 0. So we've gotten, so already we have that, uh, we have 2 which is pi. Longer than much. No, I thought it was so longer. The, the, it's longer, the period is longer. Mm -hmm. Twice as long. Twice as long, yeah. It's like 7 pi. How come when you multiplied it and then by 2, it only went up by 1? Well, it divided it in half, though. It divided the period in half. <laughs> right? Um, OK, let's go through to 3 pi. That means you're going to take the sign of, you're going to take 3 pi times 1 half. 3 pi times 1 half is what? Pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2 is what? Negative 1. Negative 1. Put in 3 pi. Why don't I take the sine of 3 pi over 2? Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so 3 pi gives you negative 1. There. Put in 4 pi. 4 pi over 2, that's 2 pi. Zero. So that goes that's through one full cycle, making the period how big? Four. Four pi. Four pi. It's almost everything is backwards. Yeah, it's kind of backwards. You multiply, the period gets smaller. Okay. We put in a two, and the period is not pi, or not sorry, not two pi, but just yeah, yeah. half of that. Five. Half of that, right? You put in one half, multiply by one half, or you divide by two, the period is now multiply by twice as big. Bigger. So, for y equals the sine of a times x, or sorry, not a, we're going to use b this time, b, so we can distinguish them from each other, or y equals the cosine of b times x, how are we going to find the period? Start with two pi, right? That's like the normal, the normal one for just sine of x. So, I don't know, p times two. Times two. Well, yeah, I got multiplied by two. So how are we going to take this one half and turn it into multiplying this by two? We went from, the, you know, b was 2, and then the period wound up being pi. Went from 2 pi to pi. And here we went from uh, 2 pi to 4 pi. But we multiplied by 1 half. So it's just the inverse of what you're multiplying it by. Yeah. So if we. Take 2 pi divided by b. Then you got, yeah. Right, for this one, p equals 2 pi over what? b. b is, is 1 half. One half. Multiply by the reciprocal. 2 pi times 2, 4 pi. Question? Yes. And when, we had, and when we did before, it, it was 2 pi, right? And then it went to 4 pi. Uh -huh. So let's say if you start out with 4 pi, and then you uh, mul uh, you uh, multiply uh, divide by again. 
would that make it? Uh, would it make it sixteen pi? Yes and no. The only way to have a period of, of four pi is to put a one half right there. Yeah, because I'm just thinking because it, it multiplies it by two. Uh, multiplies it by two. So I mean not sixteen, but eight. 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 So if we took this and multiply it by one half. That's kind of what you're saying. If you start with a period that's four pi, mm -hmm. and then multiply it by one half, then yeah, we're gonna have y equals the sine of one fourth x, and then we'll take this one fourth, two pi over one fourth, we're just gonna multiply it by four, and we wind up getting eight pi. All right. But we wanna back that up, because the graph we have is for one half x, not one fourth x. Yeah. But if we were to do that, if we were to take the sign of 1 fourth x, then yeah, it would expand the period out to 8 pi. In fact, let's do that, and we'll use the period as a tool to graph it faster, a lot faster. Um. <coughs> All right, so y equals sign 1 fourth x. So what's the period of this one going to be? Didn't we have 4 pi just a second ago? Yeah, that's the number. So 4 pi for 1 half? So 8. 8, yeah. Let's, let's use our little equation that we talked about. Uh, the period is 2 pi over b. b is 1 fourth here. 2 pi times 4 over 1. That's 8 pi. How wide is this graph? If we started from way over here, we get the length. way over there, get the length of it, that would be one period. That would be one period from the far left to the screen to the right of the screen. That would be a full 8 pi. Good. Okay? So we start here, and from here to here we should go through a full period? Half. Yeah, half. half of a period. So it, it needs to look like the sign. We know the sign uh, at the origin, it kind of starts like this and goes up like that. So we should go through half of that in 4 pi, and then the other half in the, the negative 4 pi. All right, so then we know we should come back down here. So 2 pi will be its highest. 2 pi will be its highest. You see how we can use the period to make graphing these real quick. Um, then we go over here. We know we should go through the other half of a cycle. It's going to be negative 8 pi. Pi will be a negative one. Uh, now we can see the full cycle. It's like that. We're going to need a bigger paper. Now the thing is, like I gave you those graphs and they're good to start off with, but when the periods start changing and the period might be, you know, 16 pi, how do we do that? Well, if we draw our own graphs, we can make it whatever we want. So we did the uh, y equals cosine of um, one sixth one sixth x excuse me one sixth x so instead of eight they're making times two which is sixteen no one sixth period equals two pi over b two pi times the reciprocal it's six over one twelve pi twelve so if I draw my own graph set my axes and then put the marks wherever I want them to be. So it's the cosine. Remember the cosine looks like this. Let's go back to the cosine. Way, way back there. Almost there. Get close. No. There it is. The cosine starts up here at its, at its largest value. At zero, it's one. Then it goes down to negative one and up to positive one. That's a full, a full cycle. So one full cycle looks like this. Okay. How wide should that cycle be? How big is that period? 12 pi. Okay, that's 
12 pi. We just figured out it was 12 pi. So I put a mark there, and guess what that mark is? It's 12 pi. So instead of doing a full size, we're shrunking down. Yeah. This for cosine. Yeah. And there's 3 pi and 9 pi. <coughs> and if we wanted to show another one, we could go back in the negative direction. And there's the negative 12 pi. And negative 6 pi. And on it goes. So that's why it's, it's probably best to just sketch out your own axes. And then you can mark it however it needs to be marked so that the period is right. Exactly right, but let's say we want to change the period so it it models like that temperature that we talked about. It goes from the highs to the lows to the highs again, summer, winter, you know, through all the seasons. How big is that period? Four. Well, it's going to be four if it's for each day. Okay, maybe days or months, or it depends on what we want to measure time in, right? Yeah. So <laughs> seasons four. 12 months, three, uh, 360 per year. So what, what, what do we want 365 per year? 365. So what do we want to use for time? Then months, days, weeks, what? Months. Months. Months? 12? Pretty easy. Okay. So we want the period to be 12. All right. Remember that the period is equal to 2 pi over b. So 1, uh, one uh, no, not 1, 12. 1, 6. What needs to be one sixth? B. Almost. Almost. We want to figure out what B is. That's what you guys are trying to figure out. Twelve. So we know that twelve is P. That's the period. So we just solve for B. I'm going to take that phone. Stop talking. It's <laughs> Okay, how are we going to solve for B? You don't want that B in the denominator, right? So we're going to divide by, so I mean, multiply by 1 over 2 pi. Well, sure, but what if we multiply by B, so we cancel out B, and then we, got one. we have a B over here. So we got 12, uh, then divide by 12. If we do, we're going to solve for B, so we're going to divide by 12, Divide this by so it's not one sixth, it's pi over six. So it's close. Over six. So y equals the sine of pi over six times x. Okay. How big is this period supposed to be? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve months, right? So let's say I change this to twelve, twelve months, uh, twenty-four months. So I should see two years go by here. I should see two periods. Right? Which makes this six months, makes this eighteen months. So let's test it out and see if we if we plug in these values here, we get one full cycle. Let's make sure that happens. Okay. So let's see, it should go up to one right here, so this should be three, so let's plug in three. Sine of pi over six times three. One was cancel. Get two sine of pi over two. What's the sine of pi over two? Pi over two. One. It's one. one. So we put in three. Put in three. Came out to be pi over two. Sine of pi over two is one. Now let's try six. Change this to six. Well, those cancel. We get the sine of pi. What's the sign of pi? Zero. Zero. Then we come to negative nine. Right. nine. And it should come down to negative one. Yep. Six, one, cancel, three, two, three pi over two. What's the sign of three pi over two? Negative one. Negative one. So by putting in nine, we by and multiplying by pi over six, we want to take taking the sign of three pi over two, which puts it at its minimum value. Put in 12, you can bet, zero again. And then we put in uh, 15, 
18, and then 21, and then 24. Now, this isn't quite accurate because the y value here is 1, it means 1 degree. Yeah, it doesn't get 1 degree at its hottest, right? In the summertime. Or we can just say that's how it might Maybe be it increased the south pole or something. It increased by but the actual y value needs to be the value that we're looking for. So it would actually need to be a high of, like, what's the high in the summer? Why do we have to make it 1? Well, like, let, let's, let's talk about the temperature. What, what temperature would it need to be? For what? 105. 105. Maybe it gets 105 in the summer. So instead of going up to 1, it would need to go up to 105. And then what's the low? Negative 20. Negative 20. So we need to go down to negative 20, which means we don't have to change the amplitude for sure. We also have to shift it up a little bit, quite a bit. So there's other things that we need to do. But we have made the period 12. We've been at 12 months. So it does at least go up and down at the right times. And we just need to worry about getting that all tuned in. That stuff is for like the next section. We'll figure out how to move it up and down and, and all that stuff in tandem. Okay? But for now, at zero, which I guess would be like January, which okay, now it's off a little bit too, because January should be pretty cold. So that would be the beginning of like spring. Yeah. This would be the beginning of spring. So this would put that zero is more like May. Would you consider May to be spring back? Yeah, so you know, there's some, some fine tuning to go on here, but we have made the period 12, which is something that we need to do. So apparently, if we take pi over six, we got the period to be 12, and then we'll maybe add something, multiply with some stuff, like mess around with that. But that's for that's for another time. But we did make the period 12. I was just wondering, um, uh, since we changed it, to, I know, like you said, mine just changed it from being one uh, pi or something like that yeah. to six, 12. Yeah. Can't you do the same thing for the uh, other one? So. These ones? No, yeah, uh, those, right Oh, there. yeah, you could, but still, it, it doesn't go from like 101 to negative 101. It's not symmetrical like that. It goes, uh, or 105, or whatever, it goes 105 to negative 20. So it's just barely above, below the x-axis, but very, very above the x-axis. Oh. Right? So there's, we're gonna have to move it up a little bit. Yeah. But right now, all we're gonna worry about in this section is the period and the amplitude. We're going to figure out what the amplitude is, or we're going to make the amplitude what we want it to be. We're going to figure out what the period is, or we're going to make the period what we want it to be. All right? Um, one last thing, I think. Let me just check here. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. So let's skip that. There's your homework right there. Just a few questions. I mean, just sum up these little things that we've learned. Well, y equals the sine, I guess, a times the sine of bx, or y equals a times the cosine of bx. The amplitude, what is the amplitude equal to? We figure out how tall that wave is from the middle to the top. How do we figure out what the amplitude is if we know what the equation is? Okay, plug in y. Oh, okay, we can plug it in and look at it. There's a faster way. We can just look at the equation itself, and something about it will tell us what the amplitude is. Yeah, the first, uh, first one, a. A, yes, a. But it's the absolute value of a, right? Because if it's negative, it's still positive amplitude. The period. How do we find the period? The period from uh, the front of the x. Oh, no, from Something about the number in front of x. Yeah, so b. Well, it's not just b, right? Two uh, pi no, over b. Yeah, two pi over b. Okay. There's all the useful information all in one place. 